Good morning, FlossTube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross-stitch. Every once in a while, we talk about something else crafty, but today it is all cross-stitch, and I have quite a bit. I have eight projects to show you that I worked on this week. I'm super excited. If you are new, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and hanging out with me for a little while. And if you're a returning stitching friend, as always, thank you so much. I'm ever so grateful for each and every one of you and uh, having a chance to share my love of stitching with all of you. Okay, so before we get started with the actual stitching, physical stitching, I did want to mention something to you. I know a lot of you like to do digital patterns and many of you use digital pattern readers. And for most of you who um, do like full coverage, the go-to has always been Pattern Keeper. The problem with Pattern Keeper is it is not an Apple product. and It's not for Apple products, I should say. And so you've either had to, in order to use it, you'd have to go out and buy another device of some sort in order to do it um, or try something else. In the past, um, for Apple products, there is Knit Companion, which I have for a year, done a year subscription to it. It's one of those that you just re-up every year. So I am, at the very end of last year, I did get it. I am having a little bit of trouble <laughs> navigating it, but there are some great videos out there that I just need to study a little bit more, and I'll let you know about that. But there is also another product that is usable for app on Apple devices, and it is called Markup RXP. Now, up to now, it has been um, one of those where you just buy a one-time only, and then you don't have to pay again. A couple weeks ago, I'm in their Facebook group, and join their Facebook book group if you're interested. A couple weeks ago, they mentioned that they're doing a huge update to the app, and it's coming, well, at that point, it was in a, in a few weeks. I think now, it might be sometime next week, it's coming. Um, and they said at that point, with the updates, they are moving from a one-time fee to a subscription-based model. Anybody who buys before the update comes out, uh, it gets grandfathered in and won't have to pay anything but the actual cost, that one-time cost. Now, I was, I was on the fence because the one thing that they didn't have that I really wanted was the ability to have the pages seamlessly, if there's multiple pages, um, next to each other. So it would be easy to skip side by side and down and down with pages. I believe that is coming in their current update. I know several people have asked for it, among other things. Um, so I went ahead and I said, you know what? I'm always up for a deal. <laughs> so this cost $8.99 and I did buy it. I have not tried it yet because I'm waiting for all the updates at this point. Once I, uh, Once all the updates come in, I will be able to try it and compare it to Knit Companion and I will be able to decide if it's which one works better for me and I will give you my opinions on that. I am very low tech. I think you'd figured that out by now. There's no bells and whistles on my videos. It is me talking every once in a blue moon, I can stitch two parts together. That's pretty much all I do. There's no things jumping up here, there, music, extra view. No, I'm low tech. So I always say if I can figure something out technology wise, then pretty much, I'm pretty sure anybody can. So I figured I would give you a quick heads up. You can go to their Facebook page. It was easy to join. I was accepted um, fairly quickly back before I even had thought about it. They do have a free trial, but I'm not sure if you get the free trial that helps you grandfather in to the one time only cost. You might have to actually buy it for what it's worth. Um, but the, you could certainly, for a day or two, do the free trial, see if you want to upgrade, and there's a quick, easy buy now button. Um, but I figured I'd throw that out there. For those of you who have Apple devices, have not wanted to buy something else, which has pretty much been me, which is why I haven't really gone the Pattern Keeper route, and I have been trying Knit Companion. And if you're like me, and you may find Knit Companion a little bit difficult to quite wrap your brain around, this might be another option. I'll keep you posted. Certainly check it out for yourself as well. I think if you just search Markup RXP, I will put the name of the app down below. Just search that on Facebook and you should be able to bring the page up without a problem. All right, so that's all the kind of technical stuff. Let's, 
That's it. That's it. No more technical. We are on to stitching. So I have one new start, I have a finish, and then I have multiple projects that have been rotated around. This one I pulled out Friday afternoon. As some of you know, Fridays, you know, with my filming, hold on a second, I have to readjust. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, with filming and getting the videos uploaded and just life, Fridays have a tendency to get away from me for stitching. So I usually pick something small or I pick something that I know I can easily carry over to the next day um, if I want to do the stitching. Last week I picked something small. I picked two to be from the Blue Flower. Such a pretty pattern. Now this pattern I started in February. For those of you who watch Carla from Carla Being Crafty, you'll know all about her stitch alongs in February. But if not, let me throw it out there. Um, in February, Carla hosts a stitch along. It's hashtag B, B E E, Be My Own Valentine S A L. And the whole idea is to find something with a B on it and stitch it. Now, the B is the focal piece here. It doesn't have to be, it's just more of a fun, let's stitch together something with Bs um, that Carla does. And she's done it for a few years now. So you could certainly check out, she did a, she did a fantastic one this February and she changed up the words really cleverly. So um, if you go back to February, you'd be able to see that. But anyway, this is the one I picked and I have been wanting to stitch it. It was in my pile and I figured it was the perfect time. So that's what I pulled out. Now I did change up, I'm not changing up the colors, but I did change up the fabric. And as some of you will know from my fabric experiment, sometimes things look a little bit different. Um, I think the reds, maybe pop a little bit more here on this. I'm not sure exactly. I'd really need to see it stitched side by side more so than a picture. Pictures are deceiving sometimes. But there we go. This is an 18 count blue moon from To Die For Fabrics. It's a very, very pretty blue. The white shows up nicely when it's buffeted by everything else. I don't know how much it would pop if I was just stitching it on its own. So you know me and blues with winter scenes. I love blue for winter pieces. I love blue for most pieces. <laughs> I think I could make blue work for almost anything. Um, but I do get picky what, in the winter, what's gonna work for the snow. Because you want that to, you know, to, to actually see it. But, so this one might be a little bit difficult for that, but how it brings out the pinks, the mauves, the reds in this, even then going towards more of the, the uh, it's almost like a mustard yellow in some ways. I am using the DMC alternatives. You know that that's generally most of the time what I do. And I picked, and it might be tough to see some progress. If you see this flower here, I took that color pink, which is a lighter-ish pinkish, and I found a bunch of different places in the pattern where um, that showed up and I did that. I, that might be it for that color. There might be a tiny bit more, but what I was trying to do is maybe start to finish up colors. I did that. Then I, I, I always do some greenery somewhere just to get a little bit more of the green done. And then I decided to do some of the bee. I could have gone this way, but <laughs> it's like, nah, I want to try it down here. So we worked on the bee. So that's where we are. This one probably with, if I was doing it weekly, it probably would get done, you know, maybe in another month or so. But because of my May plans, some of my regulars are not going to see as much work. So I don't know exactly what's going to come in May. I'm not doing 31 different pieces or 31 starts or things like that. Um, I'm doing a combination of pulling back stuff within a certain theme, some new starts. There's all sorts of things I'm going to do. I might do an extra May video because it would take up too much time, I think, in my regular videos because I already talk and talk and talk as it is. So then the videos would be really super long. <laughs> so maybe this weekend I might have some time. I might try to throw up a video or at least tape it and then maybe get it, um, either Monday, Sunday or Monday, get it out. We'll see. Look for it. It might happen. We'll see what my schedule is like. But anyway, that's what that one looks like. I love it. I love it. 
is so much fun. Play with your background fabrics. I know some of you have said that um, it, the whole idea kind of, I don't want to say scares you, but you know what I mean. Like you spend so much time and effort stitching these that you, you know you can worry that you've picked the wrong color. I always get all of the flosses. I throw it on multiple pieces of fabric, including the neutrals, because there are things that I stitch on neutral. And I really see what makes that color pop for me. And that's usually what makes the decision for me. And there's been a time or two I've started stitching something and I'm kind of like, mm -mm, no, it doesn't. And because I haven't given myself a huge chunk, if I can tell right away it's not working for me, I'm okay with trying something else. It's trial and error. So give it a try. Okay, so that's that one. If you want, obviously, you, you know, I mean, you picked patterns sometimes because you love how they look. And so if you want to use the called for or something very similar, go for it. You know, it's, it's, it's your hobby. Have fun with it. Okay, next. This one was started, what, maybe two weeks ago? I think it's two weeks ago. Oh, I'm picking up too much here. I don't think, yeah, because I, I showed it to you last week, so it wouldn't have been started last week. This is, once I finished Lady Halloween, I kind of wanted another, this is not a Quaker, um, but I kind of wanted a bigger piece um, type of thing that I could kind of focus on. Not every week yet, I'm not at that point, but eventually I might get there. Um, and this came out, I don't know if it was a market piece or if it just came out right around that time from Autumn Land Stitchery, this is Serena Sprout. And the first thing that caught me were the colors, the pinks, the purples, the blues, the greens. As soon as I saw it, I loved the colors, especially on, they have it um, showing, they're showing it on Friendship Green from Fabrics by Stephanie. But you know, I love using, actually I do love using greens for outdoor sort of things as well. Um, greens and blues are my two that I go to um, potentially first. So as soon as I saw this, I said, oh, the green and then all the colors it just jumped out at me so I picked up the pattern I picked up the digital and I finally got it started after going through several different greens and throwing the floss on them <coughs> excuse me I came up with this now let me do this because you don't need to see all the green yet I'll show it up a little bit more with the green again this right here is 18 count Honeydew Melon from To Die For Fabrics. It, was, it wasn't an, originally on my radar, but then she put it out on her website, um, I don't know, maybe like a month before I was really gonna start stitching this. And I loved it. I said, oh, let me try that too. So I tried it. I stitched, uh, the first time you saw it, you would have seen mostly just the greens and the blues because that's what it was when it started. So I made a specific effort this week to start in with some of the other colors. So you have the pinks and the purples, and I love it. Even the greens, it, it, they don't blend in. They pop out enough. There might be one of the aquas that blends in a little bit if it was on its own in a big place, but because there are other colors around it, you can see it, and so it comes out. So I love, love, love this piece so far. And I can't wait till I even get more colors in. It's just so much fun. Now, when we did Lady Halloween, we did have a stitch along. It was hashtag Lady Halloween SAL. If you have not stitched it and you're thinking about it, I loved every minute of that stitch. Go for it. If you're, if you're on the fence and you think you like it and you kind of like that kind of Quakerish look and uh, single pieces, go for it, really. And you can check out that, that hashtag on Instagram. You can see great variety of how people have been stitching it. So I said, well, once that was done, let's throw out another hashtag. So I have hashtag Serena Sprout SAL. Have I posted anything on Instagram yet? No, because I am the world's worst Instagrammer on the face of this earth. But I really do. And now that I've done this video, what I really need to do is to pop this up with the um, picture, throw at least a starting photo on there, and then jump on that hashtag if you're stitching it. I would absolutely love to see what fabric you chose, how you're stitching it, where you are in the process. I know somebody has started it at the bottom, so that's kind of cool. Hers would look completely different than mine right now, and it would just be a lot of fun to see. 
and I do like her color choice of fabric. It's a great color choice. So, you know, throw it out there. Let's see what you're doing if you're doing it. Serena Sprout. Okay, let's move on. Next, originally I was not going to start this until May because one of the things I'd like to focus on in May is mini full coverages because, you know, it's not like I, you know, don't have enough already, right? Big full coverages. But I absolutely adore this piece and I had the floss for it and it was one day last week, I don't even remember, I said, you know what? I'm starting it. I had the fabric already cut. I had wanted to start it a few weeks ago, uh, earlier, but I didn't have the right flosses. So I said, that's it, I'm going to. It is called Mini Paris Morning from the artwork is done, well, it's Heaven and Earth charted and the artwork is Uliana Babenko. Oh, I am so sorry about that name, M messing up that name. Um, but this comes in full size and a mini and heaven and earth is funny. So sometimes the minis <laughs> aren't that many and sometimes the full sizes aren't bad, but then sometimes they're 900 stitches by 700 stitches. So I always look at the size of the full coverage. If there's a piece I like, I look to see if there's many, I know you can request it. I'm pretty sure some designs don't necessarily translate well to minis, but I think felt, I'm really hoping, and I think this one will, I felt like this would. So as a mini, it became 243 by 325. I feel like that's manageable. I really do. So what caught me, of course, a cute little doggy, my little shamrock. He's not quite as begging for food now that he's um, not feeling the greatest, but he you always knew if Shamrock was there looking for food, <laughs> he was doing fine. And he could, he could hear something coming out of the fridge or out of the pantry a mile away and he'd come running. So there's my cute little doggy. And there, this little doggy does show up in a couple of the other patterns from this art, uh, designer. Um, I have one other one. And then I think there's one in my wish list, but, um, <laughs> I absolutely adored it. I really, of course, it's gonna take me forever and a day to get down to the dog. I start in the upper left-hand corner. So there's lots of, there's lots of time yet till I get to that. But let me show you. I feel like for a start, I didn't do too bad. I mean, it's not, it's not much to look at. It's just the curtain so far. But what was nice was I wasn't actually starting with sky for a change. <laughs> Cause it seems like most of my full coverage is it's like a sky in that corner, maybe a little bit of tree. <laughs> so this was kind of nice. This itself is an 18 count white Ada. I stitch full crosses, two strands over one. So two over one full cross. And for the Ada, I do buy, um, it's called Kato, C-A-Y-D-O. I buy it from Amazon. I want to say a yard is about $18.99, which I feel like is a decent deal. Now, it's not perfect. Let me see if I can show you. There is, for example, there is kind of like a, a slubby part right here. What I do is I look over the whole piece and then when I cut it from my, my, my whatever piece I'm gonna do, so this is the length of this one, it's not huge, um, I look. And if it's in the middle somewhere and it looks like I'll be able to do, get my needle through, I don't even worry about it. This one is gonna be on the outer edge so it's not gonna show either. So I, I, full disclosure, I did want to say that, that they do have those once in a while. I will say that this is not as stiff as some of the other white Ada's you can get. And so I stitch in hand, so it gets a lot of work. I stitch with my left hand. And so I will generally roll up. I'm not going to roll it straight. I can never do it on demand. I roll it up and then I'll stitch and the act of constantly doing that and working at it really softens up the fabric for me. And for example, my Hidden Harbor, uh, did I show that last week? I think I did. Um, the fabric is, is actually quite soft at this point, or it feels quite soft. It, it has kind of broken down a little bit. Still great to stitch on square wise, but it's a little bit easier to handle. Um, so the first, you know, several times stitching it, it's a little bit stiffer, but not that crazy 
hard, stiff uh, Ada that uh, you can get some places. So there we go. This one will most definitely, well, I shouldn't say most definitely, but I'm pretty sure it, you are going to see it. It's going to get stitching time in May. So I love it. I love the colors so far. And it's nice to be able to do one that's not just completely all blues for sky. Okay, next. I pulled this one out because I really, really, really need to finish this one. It's Plum Street Samplers, Betsy's Autumn. This has been around since fall of 2019. And it really needs, there's not a lot of reason why it's still hanging around. I mean, it's still got some more stitching, but it, it, I'm close. So let's show you as a whole. That's what Betsy looks like. Bring her up closer. This is 18 count Honey Amber by Fabrics by Stephanie. Now I have both this one started and Cinnamon Stars. And I stitched them both, they're the same kind of color palette. I stitched them both on the same fabric, which is kind of cool in my mind. And what I'm going to do is, I think the, the pumpkins, I might've changed some of these too. Like Prairie School or sometimes Plum Street, some things like their pumpkins and stuff end up brown on the DMC alternatives. So I did keep the pumpkins all one shade. And what I might do is figure out which color that is and transfer that to Cinnamon Stars so that there's a little bit of continuity. Some of the colors and the color schemes are different, but they're the same vibe. They're both a Plum Street vibe. So certainly um, I think it would match nicely that way too. Let me show you. I was focusing on this part, pretty much filling in some leaves. I have I have a skeleton of a leaf done here. I just have to do the outer part. And then I have a couple more leaves right here that I need to do. And then I need to come down here. I did a little bit of grass. I do a little bit each time I stitch because it's easy. There's no real counting at that point. It's just going along. I have some leaves to fill in here. I still have her face to do, but her dress is done. So we're definitely getting along with it there. And there might be, I think like there's um, some pumpkin stems on this side. And oh, you know what I'm not doing? So the, the house itself, uh, there's some sort of big vehicle driving by, but I know a lot of you said, don't worry about it. So I'm just gonna keep going, even though it's making some noise. Um, all of these windows are supposed to be filled in but I gotta tell you, I like them with that color. Maybe if I had chosen a different color um, fabric, but with that color, I kind of like them that, so I am not going to fill those in. That's the one thing I'm not going to do on this. But this really doesn't have a lot more time. I just need to give it some attention. And I had made the decision to finish this one before I go and move on to Cinnamon Stars. This was started well, at least a good six months beforehand. It just needs, it needs a finish at this point. So hopefully soon, hopefully soon you'll see a finish on this one. Okay, Betsy's Autumn. And like I said, for, for May, it, it, it'll be it'll be a whole bunch of different things. I'll, I'll say brief stuff in plans. So some of these may not, you may not say, I may not say all of these are going away for the next month. You'll never see them. There will be chances that some of these do get some, some attention over the next month, but it won't necessarily be the focus. Okay, next. I picked up, and I wasn't going to do this one this week, but I was thinking about what to stitch. And I said, okay, I have one more week in April before all the May stuff. I'm just gonna, gonna give it one more week. So I did pull out my Summer Gnome. This is Summer Gnome 2 from Wonderland, Ukraine. Anybody new, I am not going to stitch that blue background, except I will stitch along his feet, that little circle to kind of ground him a little bit. Now, as I continue to stitch this, and I have the sunflower. Yep, nope, I have three stitches that I've skipped, and so, but I have to get back to. But other than that, the sunflower at the top of the hat is completely done. And I'm not sure if it shows up here as well as it does in person. That detail in the flower 
as I was stitching it, it just keeps popping more and more to life. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And I think that's why I keep feeling like I need to stitch it. So this guy is going to be a decent size when you think about it. And you get three in the set. This is an 18 count. It's an unnamed fabric. It is from Coffee Craft Fabrics. As always, remember, everything is listed down below. Under each project that I've talked about, I list pertinent information as to, you know, if it's something specifically like Autumn Land Stitchery, I'll link to their um, Etsy store. I'll link to this Etsy store. If it's something that you just get readily like um, Betsy's Autumn from any online or in-person store, I generally don't link those. Um, I will link Coffee Craft. You get their fabrics. They're a UK-based fabric dyer, and they also do floss, um, and they have a Facebook page, and so you do things through their Facebook page. I will link them. This was just a, a larger piece of a one-off that I picked up. It is on the greenish, and it's more of the um, grayish green tones, but I really feel like these colors are going to pop on it. So that's, that's, that's where he is. And I finished the flower this week because I, I was just, I was called to finish it. And then I did just did more of, of his hat. I think right here will be another sunflower. I think there's three. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I just, I didn't expect the amount of detail and the depth of detail when I started stitching this. And I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised at how fun it is to stitch this and see everything pop. So that's Summer Gnome 2 from Wonderland, Ukraine. Okay. Now I have my finish. I am going to show you the original, which, you know, obviously with a finish, you don't necessarily need to do. But I did want to, because I did want to show you, the original does have the writing on it, which I did not do. This is my Delaware piece. The shop is Vlada X Stitch. I'll link down below. They have all 50 states, they have countries, they have other things as well. I mean, it's not just that. Um, I was drawn to the state. So I picked that up. I am not stitching the word Delaware. I didn't really felt, feel like I needed to. So I skipped that and just stitched the state itself. And I finished it up this week. I was close. I said, I just want to, I just want to buckle down and get it finished. So there we go. So from a distance, that's Delaware. And let's bring it up close. The only thing I changed was this guy here was charted in 310. And I char I changed it to, oh, I've already taken the flosses out. And I didn't write it down. I changed it to a deep navy. Is 939, let me see. Is 939 a navy? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's 939. I'm almost sure. But I could double check if you were ever interested. Let me put that back. Okay. I have a way of storing my flosses now. That if I can ever get my craft room, it's slowly, slowly, slowly getting organized. Once it's organized, I will do a full organized tour. Anyway, so that was the only change I made. Every other color I used was their called for colors. I am down in the southern part of Delaware. <laughs> and for my friends, I'm told in Cape May, New Jersey, there is a, a Crustus store. So we have Lewis right here. And if you cross over with the ferry, you can get to Cape May, New Jersey. So at some point I said to Mo, I want to jump on the ferry. I don't know exactly if it'll get done before this year's season. And then I'm not sure during season. What's Cape May like in the middle of summer? Probably crazy, huh? I know I have a lot of New Jersey stitching friends. Let me know when I should go. But anyway, that is a plan I want to do at some point. Um, but there we go. And I want to say down here, if you come farther down, almost until, so you've got Ocean City, Maryland is down here. And if you go all the way down, I don't know, about an hour's drive is Salty Yarns, which is a crusted store right on the shoreline of Maryland. Um, it takes an hour in, and then we went out of season. It was October in season. I can bet you that's probably going to take a lot longer. There is a small one though here in Bethany 
which is over here, which is a beautiful beach if you ever wanted to um, visit. And um, I was there pre-pandemic, but I haven't been able to get back since. So I'm hoping maybe at some point to get down there and check it out. We stayed before we even built down here, when we were just looking in Delaware, there is a, a wonderful, wonderful B&B &B in, and it's right on, it's right on the beach in Bethany. So if anybody is ever looking for a place to stay, let me know in Bethany. It's a wonderful place and Bethany town itself is really kind of nice. So anyway, that's my little Delaware stuff, but it's done. Super excited. I, for some reason, never cut this, so I have to do that, but I know I'll finish. Okay. Now, this next one, I pulled it out. I went to my needlework group yesterday, and <laughs> I am realizing when you're chatting with other people, it's really hard to count and chat, so then you don't necessarily do as much stitching, but I pulled this one out because I knew, actually, I don't need my iPad for it. I knew I didn't have to, um, it was a fill-in section. I knew I didn't have to count so I could chat and stitch at the same time and I got a decent amount done. This will come out in May. I started Kringles from Little House Needleworks in, oh, Betsy's Autumn was 2020 as well. I said 2019. Betsy's Autumn was October of 2020. This was May of 2020. So this was the very first time I participated in any sort of May events. And I wanna say I picked four pieces and I started a new one each week. And they were larger. This was by far the largest. Now, I started up here and once I did the roof, I was done. I, I, I kinda of was done with this project, I'm not gonna lie. But then I made the executive decision to cut out a floor and it completely reinvigorated my want of stitching this. So I'm only going to have a two-story Kringles building. I haven't decided which, uh, you know, I'll take of these six and put, you know, choose three to go here. I haven't decided which ones yet. That'll be end. I'm right now still building the structure. And I am right here with the sign. So I have more fabric than I would need because originally this was supposed to be three floors. So I'm going to fold it. And there we go. And let's go in. I'm I'm just filling in Kringles. Now I had originally started this uh, room, and I decided that that was not one of the <coughs> excuse me windows I did want to do. So I am in the process of frogging that out and pulling out all the stitches. It's slow going, so I try to do a little bit of pulling out after I've stitched. So I have you know the sign here to f finish. And then we come down and, you know, you've got those beautiful, beautiful doors and the front windows with chandeliers. Um, so I'm super excited to get into that, but I'm getting to the point where the structure is almost done. I am going to pull that, this out in May since this now is a two-year, almost two-year project. And I do want to start getting work on it. This is 18 Count Artemis from Be Stitch Me. It's a wonderful, wonderful gray woodwork for tons of types of projects if you're looking for a nice gray. Artemis is definitely one of them. So that's where we are. And it was great. I could just chat away and just fill in. So that's what I did. But yes, Kringles is something you will see next month. Okay, my last one, my last of all the pieces. I didn't necessarily know what I was going to stitch yesterday. So I did Kringles for a bit because that was, you know, what I wanted to bring to the, the needlework group. But I figured I'm, that's gonna get attention in May. I figured, ah, let's see if there's something else I want to stitch. And I'm so glad I pulled this out. This is from Artif Designs. It's called Love Boat Sampler. And I did take um, her example of the pink fabric and I did run with it. It might be a slightly lighter pink in the end than what she's got, but I'm so glad I did go with the pink and I got more done that I absolutely love how it's looking. So there it is. And there goes that truck again. <laughs> oh, I hope those the poor driver is wearing something on their ears. Otherwise they're gonna have no hearing left. That's what it looks like. 
So this is 18 count. It's 18 count lighthearted from Dying for Cross Stitch. Kathy um, has a website. She's not just Facebook anymore. And um, Kathy's fabric for, is a little bit looser. So it's more reminiscent of, oh, mm, oh, this is going to drive me nuts now. It's going to come to me. You know, you're all yelling at me. The, the, the looser weaved fabric that one, two, three stitch has and all the places have, it'll come to me. Anyway, it's looser. Things like be stitch me, um, to die for fabrics, Stephanie, fabrics by Stephanie. Um, a lot of them aren't stiff, but they hold up a little bit more. This one's looser. I don't know if it's the process of stitch. So if you do like the looser, um, weave ish, even with the Ada, then this, um, try her stuff. I just have to be careful because sometimes I pull a little too hard and I noticed in one of the motifs, you can kind of see the holes a little bit because I wasn't paying attention, but yesterday I really did try to pay attention. So, um, picture this plus that's it. I knew it would come. I knew it. You just have to stop thinking about it and trying, right? So because this is 18 count, this is going to be cute. I mean, look at this is the whole fabric and obviously, so it's going to be a cute little sampler and it's just a bunch of motifs. What did I do? I did some of the darker color here. I finished this flower. I did the guys on either side. I did all that flower. I did a little bit of the greenery and flower over here, but now, oh, and I did all these blues. I did a lot actually. Um, I love it. I love it. Adding, I wasn't, I wasn't completely sold. I really enjoyed it. But then when you added the blue in and it contrasted with the copperish and the pinks and, and deep and light pinks, it sold it for me and I absolutely adore it. So I'm so happy I, get, I pulled this one out yesterday. So that's where she is. Love, love, love it. Now I think it is charted in color and cotton, it is, but she does give a DMC alternative and I did go with the DMC alternative. There might be a few places where the variegated would make sense, but some of these smaller things, I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's because I don't use the variegated and so I just kind of default to DMC and I think it's gonna be beautiful. So there it is, Love Boat Sampler, Artist Design. And after doing all of these blues and doing over here, it reinvigorated this one. I had stalled slightly on it, even though it's beautiful. I mean, look at this. How pretty is that? But for some reason I had stalled and now I am just completely loving it again. So that's that. Okay. That is all of the stitching. So plans. I'm not going to talk much about May. I think I might do, if I have time... Tomorrow afternoon or Sunday, I might do a quick, quick May 2022 stitch plan and do a little extra video because I, I have, I'm trying to do a Mary and Minnie May and Minnie is dual. It means two different things. I'm not doing all new starts. I am most definitely, especially for the Mary part, pulling out older projects that have been started that need to see work because otherwise they're just never gonna get done. Um, I am not doing a new start or a new project all 31 days. There will be repeats. Um, and some of these might be some of the pieces that you've seen all along. I, I'm not necessarily putting them all to the side for this month. I have. I don't know, you know, I don't have it that planned. The fact that I have it called Mary and Minnie May is pretty much, <laughs> A big deal for me. And I might have called it Minnie and Mary May last week. I don't even know. I keep going back and forth which one I like better. I think I like Mary and Minnie May. But anyway, so if I can get my act together, I will put a little video t together on that. And it it wouldn't be long like these are. It shouldn't be long like these are. How much do I have to say? Um, and then I would love to know what your plans are too, if you're doing anything special or you're just kind of stitching along. And you know my plans are adaptable. They're fluid. Nothing is ever set in stone with my stitching. 
Okay, happy mail. I have a little bit of happy mail that I'd like to show you. Um, I had one stitchy friend send me some items. I'm just gonna show you a couple of what she sent to me. Um, this first one. I really like this one because I, I like the possibilities. This is called Snowballs from for Sale and it's a Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet pattern. Super cute. You know that there's two things I would do with this pattern wise, uh, fabric wise. I would either stitch it on a blue, which I think would look so fun. Or I would stitch it on a blue with, you know, the blues with the dots. So it looks like it's snowing. I would stitch it on one of those patterns and I would not stitch all the snowflakes around. One of those two things will happen when I pull out this pattern. I'm just not sure which yet. So that's a lot of fun. And then I had not seen these. I love Summer House Stitch Works. I really, really do. And there were two that um, she sent me. One is called Spring Awakens and one is called, I gotta be careful because the pattern's on the other side. One is called Winter Cometh. How cool are those? I think, I think, I think though. And what's funny is I happen to see, I was scrolling on, I there's a few different cross-stitch groups that I, I joined on Facebook just basically to see what people are stitching. And I saw somebody stitching, I wanna say spring cometh, if I, probably because it's springtime. I don't think I'm gonna do multiple colors. So each one is only charted in the three colors and then it, it rotates back and forth. I would pick one color, but I would pick a beautiful fabric to highlight that season and then pick whatever color would bounce off of that. In my organizational <laughs> journey, I recently um, folded up, do I have one available? I have one that's not in a box container yet. I basically took all of my fabrics, you've seen other people do it, and they put it on um, their, they put it on the comic book boards. So I did that with all my fabrics, and I realized when they weren't just kind of thrown and piled in I had, a, I had a couple extra under the bed boxes and that's where I had the fabric. Well, I couldn't tell what I had. Now that I've folded everything and they're put in, um, see those bins right there? That's where they are. I realize I have some gorgeous, gorgeous fabric that I did not know about right, or had forgotten. So why not highlight it and take some beautiful patterns, which both of these are so fun, but really embrace the fabric and then pick a color of thread that would really complement it. So that's what I'm gonna do with these as opposed to the multiple colors, but I adore these. And then finally, I haven't looked through it yet. I wanna, I'm so looking forward to, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea later on today and I'm gonna to flip through the Just Cross Stitch design. Uh, this is June of 2022. She was very kind to pass along with me. Isn't that gorgeous? So, so pretty. I love that. I really, really love that. So I'm super excited to look through this. I haven't looked, I haven't looked through it yet because I want to enjoy it with my tea. I discovered a new, I really liked Republic of Tea. That's my favorite tea company. And um, they have a strawberry hibiscus, which perfect to go with a springtime but it's very strawberry. You have to like strawberry. The smell is very strawberry and there is the hint of strawberry in the taste. So if you don't like strawberry, it's not gonna work for you. But um, I am super excited. I'm gonna pour myself a cup of that. I'm gonna sit down with my magazine and I'm gonna have a nice flip through. Okay, that was one set of happy mail. This other set of happy mail. This beautiful card came from Paula. Now Paula herself has a floss tube. It's stitching in high heels. I will link her down below. Paula is amazing. Actually, I think it goes this way, sorry. Paula is amazing with her stitching. It is beautiful. And she stitches all sorts of things on all different types of fabric. So if you'd like to see some other things besides the Ada, um, she's uh, fun to watch. And um, she also finishes things that are beautiful. Well, I got a box yesterday. She said, okay, I'd really like to send you something. Um, and the box came yesterday. I opened it up. You notice it's been displayed because it is too gorgeous. I opened it up. Look at this. Look at this beautiful stitched piece. How perfect is this for me by the shore? 
We've got our whales. We've got our lighthouse. I mean, I'm, I'm all about lighthouses and whales. And then look at how gorgeous we've got some, look at the cute little whale <laughs> and the lighthouse there. How beautiful is this? I, I am, I will never have a finish as beautiful as this done by me. <laughs> I could, I can guarantee you that because I cannot so worth a lick and I am completely blown away how beautiful this is. So I've already told Paula how much I appreciated it, but Paula, thank you so, so much for first off stitching something for me. I mean, how beautiful is that? And her stitching is gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, so first off that, but then sending me this beautiful finished piece and it is something that I will never be able to do. And it is going to, right now, I don't know what my final placement will be, but right now it is up there where I can see it all the time, especially where my table is going to be. I will be able to see this. Um, so I am ever so grateful. Thank you so much, Paula. That is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I am so grateful for your generosity. Okay. <sighs> Shopping. I almost had nothing. Almost, almost, almost had nothing. And then we get a notice from Heaven and Earth Designs. Yes, I know. Like, I need more. Like, I need a hole in the head. That she was doing some sort of testing. Oof, excuse me. I have a little something on my glasses, and I'm going to look at that the entire video now. Um, she was doing some sort of testing on the website for reactivity, and she was going to have a sale. Now, I told you last week, sales get me. 50% off sales really get me. I mean, really, 50% off. So I only picked up, I only have two to show you. <laughs> I feel like that's really great. They're two minis. I'm on a mini kick. Now, oh, this is the regular size, but I bought the mini. It's fine. I actually could have bought the regular size. This regular size is 350 by 293. So I, it actually would be doable. That's the thing with, with um, Heaven and Earth. Always look to see... Because just because it's a regular size and not a mini, it might not be too out of reach. Well, I mean, really, those of you who know me, stitching by the shore. I now live in a, in a town that is a beach town. So I had to have this. Absolutely had to. And I think it will translate to a mini beautifully. So I picked that one up. The artist I picked, they're both from the same artist. It's Lynn Fogel. I picked this one up. And then I picked this one up. How beautiful is that with the sunflowers and the butterfly? And and this is a mini, for example, is 287 by 225. So I feel like that's totally doable. Okay, that, that background and that blue is gonna be a lot of blue. If I was really good, and I don't know, maybe maybe I'll be able to do this with the um the markup RXP. If I really wanted, I suppose I could find a blue fabric that I could stitch it on and then just do everything else. I don't know, how, how easy or hard is that for those of you who are experienced? Let me know. So that's it. But I couldn't, it was like a three day sale and I held out, I held out and I said to myself, it's 50% off. And again, you get me at sale, but you especially get me at a 50% off sale. So that's it though, that's all for shopping. Now. Oh, but I did want to show you. I had picked this up a couple weeks ago. Um, I thought this was a lot of fun. And I took it yesterday stitching uh, with me to my stitching group. And it was perfect. And I'll have to ask. So this was made by, I've known her from stamping and paper crafting. But her and her twin sister are actually incredible seamstresses as well. And she sews quite a bit. And she sells a lot of what she sews. So she was having a sale again, see sales. Um, and she was trying to get rid of some stuff that she had made that was, uh, just in her home. That she wanted to get rid of. How fun is this? It's a Wizard of Oz fabric. Isn't that cool? And so look at most of my projects are generally, you know, here we have, I make sure there's nothing to see just your Ziploc bag. I do have a few, um, uh, project bags which I think would work fine too. But this literally just slid right in and it worked perfectly. The other thing is inside, 
she's got all sorts of pockets. There's four, two on each side. So it's beautiful. And so I absolutely, one, yeah, two, two and two. I absolutely found a new bag to take with me when I'm stitching. I want to keep my Molly Ali for the house and I want to keep that. Um, but when I leave the house and I need something, now I can bring my Wizard of Oz. So I had picked it up. I had forgotten to show you. So I just wanted to show you. Right now, Connie just basically stitches things and she stitches, you know, different things besides just bags. I got all my masks from her back at the beginning of the pandemic. She was doing the pleated masks. All of them were bought um, from her. Because again, I love her sewing abilities. Um, but uh, she does other things like makeup bags and um, little key fobby things and stuff. But I don't know if she necessarily has a site or if it's just a Facebook group. I'll ask her. I'll ask her and I'll let you know. Sometimes you can request certain fabrics. Um, like if I said I wanted something in a specific style, she might see what she has and you know, then she could show me type of thing. I think I did that with some of the masks. If I said, oh, do you have anything, you know, X, Y, Z or certain colors or whatever. So um, I'll ask Connie and see if she has anything because she, she does beautiful, beautiful work. Oh, and there's a little, there's actually a little snap too. So it does snap close. So yeah, so there's my Wizard of Oz bag. Super excited. That wasn't this week's shopping though. That was a go. Okay, giveaways. Let's talk giveaways. Now, one thing I do want to remind. So a few giveaways ago, I was giving away the 10, well, I guess it's 10 euro gift certificate from Jardin Privé. The first winner after two weeks, I didn't hear from. So last week I pulled, I need something to show it against. You know what? I can do this. Boo. Um, last week I pulled a new name. I have not heard yet. So this, this winner has one more week to get back to me. Her YouTube name is just Gail. And so I need to hear from her, um, or you, Gail, sorry. I need to hear from you within the next week or next video. I will choose a, another winner because I go two weeks for giveaways. I still have all the names. I always keep everything until I hear from the winner. Otherwise, the recent stuff has been out, has gone out. This week's giveaway, a lot of you are interested in the summer ABCs. I'm super excited. Now remember, this is a pattern. Let me see, summer ABCs. This is a pattern that I stitched. Um, so it, I am passing the stash. I thought it was quite, kind of appropriate on Earth Day weekend to find something to not throw out, but to recycle to the next stitcher who may <clears throat> be interested in stitching it because we want to save the earth, right? So I thought that was perfect. Um, let me fix up the names. A lot of you like watermelon. I think Shamrock had some watermelon this morning, actually. He's not always hungry. He, his appetite wavers. It never used to, but now it is now that he's ill. Um, but today is kind of a hungry day. And so I, just before I was taping, Mo gave him some watermelon. And he was loving it. Actually, most of the watermelon was good. I'm more of a, either I'm going to go pineapple or mango, if I'm going that way, or I'm going to go blueberries, raspberry, strawberries. I'm not so much a watermelon girl. Mo is, though. Mo and Megan. Both of them, they'd fight over the water. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so who is our winner? Let me pull one name out. I've got just one. Let's take this again. And who is, ah, oh, Mary Beth. Mary Beth Ringland, congratulations. Mary Beth, if you can get back to me with your address, you know I can, you can either send me, I don't know why I'm holding my hand up, this is fine. <laughs> uh, you can either send it to me on my Gmail address, which is listed below, or DM me on Instagram. Okay, so Mary Beth, I am gonna put your name with this pattern, and I'm gonna put it back in the plastic, maybe. See if I can do this without, you know what? Nope, I'm gonna put it on top and I'll do that afterwards. I'm not gonna waste the time. Okay, this week, this was a pattern that I had bought, oh, back when I was, you know, you, you get into, well, for me, a second time, cross stitch after my 30 year break, um, or even just in the beginning. And you, you almost like buy all the things, right? At that point, I really hadn't discovered fabrics, hand-dyed fabrics, so it was buying all of the, the patterns. 
And so now as I'm looking through, and it becomes more obvious when you're trying to organize things, right? What will I stitch and what won't I stitch? I have more patterns to last me than I ever need. I'm going to find other ones that I like. So I need to, you know, I need to make decisions of things that I, I think are cute, but are just not going to get stitched anytime. And I'd much rather share it with all of you. And one of you who would really like to stitch it now, I'd rather share it. If at some point, five years from now, I say, oh, I really want to stitch that. You know, I'll just get another one. So as summer approaches, and a lot of you do really like to stitch patriotic, I do a little patriotic stitching. I don't do a ton. No real reason for it. I, I just feel like I'm drawn to other things and I don't, what I stitch that is seasonal, it's not necessarily gonna go out in my house. Maybe a few things will get displayed in the studio here in the craft room, but for the most part, they won't necessarily. So I'd like to share it with you. This is from Country Cottage Needleworks and it's called Land of Liberty. It is super cute. You could stitch either part of these on their own for some sort of display, stitch them together. There's a lot of options. So, I'm going to ask you to say the word land, L-A-N-D, land. If you would like me to put your name in the blue bowl for the Land of Liberty pattern from uh, Country Cottage Works. Okay, so that's that. That's the giveaway. All right, that's the stitching. We are done. Um, life, what do I have for life? Num. <laughs> I went to talked with my stitching. So the needlework group is any kind of needlework. So you may have crochet or knitting or cross stitch or any needlepoint or any other type of needlework. So that's kind of cool because you get to see what other people are working on. And, um, you know, if somebody is really experienced with something, they might be able to not necessarily teach you, but help you with a problem um, that you've got with whatever type of needlework. So that was a lot of fun. And I got to meet some new people from my neighborhood because you know that's what we're really trying to do um there's a new cornhole league that started up um and it was just open play last night and mo went for the same thing we want to kind of meet new people in our neighborhood area and just um everybody's been super nice so you know why not why not meet people so that was a lot of uh, a lot of fun for me he had a lot of fun last night even though it was cold it felt like the middle of march and not that may 1st was coming on sunday it's crazy, crazy cold weather right now. Um, I know a lot of you like my little shamrock updates. He had a rough week eating this week. Uh, he's gotten super, super picky. But the one thing I noticed, and I need to ask, because I know a lot of you have dogs. Well, shamrock, several, several years ago, uh, had to have all his teeth pulled because they just were not in good shape. And for his own health, he needed that. He's done fine. But yesterday I was, I, of course, you know, he's not eating. I get, you know you know me, I'm like been worried. And so I sat down next to him when I put out some food and I noticed he's no longer using, say like his lips to grab stuff. He uses his tongue and he tries to just swipe it. And depending on the food, he can't get it. Um, and we've tried sometimes in the, the bowl itself, sometimes we try to put things on a plate. We, we mix it around, we're back to the bowl, you know, cause this way maybe he can kind of swipe it off the sides. If you have a dog that has no teeth, was there something that you found really worked? Um, we tried some soft, it was almost, it was a powder and you added liquid to it. It smells like gravy. Um, and, but it, it's, it's hard. He can't seem to take that up either because it's almost too, it's not like liquid, liquid, you know, type of thing. So any of you who'd have, especially older dogs that may be pickier now with their eating, and have no teeth or are having trouble maybe sometimes getting because he, he definitely has a little bit more trouble. What can I feed them? I can't do really mushy. I can't do anything that kind of sticks to the bottom. He has no teeth, so I can't do anything really hard. So we're, we're working on it. This morning we, we made the scrambled eggs and we sprinkled. So the stuff that you add the water to, it's powder. So I sprinkled some of the powder part on the egg. So it kind of smelled like a gravy egg. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying everything. So any, any uh, suggestions there would be very much appreciated. Um, 
what else? Oh, here comes, oh, there goes the plane. We are, I don't know how many of you know, but Dover Air Force Base, it's probably about 45 minutes from me. And so we're always in the flight path of planes. It is amazing how loud they are, even if they're not right over your, um, right over your, uh, your house. I was driving last week when I went to Megan's game, I was, I had noticed, you know, what are the big ones? Are they like cargo jet type things, you know, where they can put a whole bunch of stuff in? I had noticed one flying towards Dover when I was driving up um, to go to Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. And I was, I, and then I didn't see it anymore. I said, oh, I must have landed. So I was just about even with the Air Force Base. And then all of a sudden this giant plane flew right over, <laughs> scared the heck out of me because all of a sudden, I mean, it was really low to the ground because it was, it was landing at that point. I don't know exactly where the, you can't really see all of the runways. You see some planes, but obviously there's stuff that you can't see. But I, I had never really had a plane that close to, my, <laughs> to me before. Completely scared me. Um, but anyway, that's a complete tangent. Um, that whole thing was a tangent. Uh, so yeah, so Shamrock's good. Uh, Megan's got her last game this week, uh, Saturday. But they're having a huge, Bryn Mawr does a huge thing for May Day. And normally it would be May 1st, but May 1st and 2nd are the last two days of Ramadan, I believe. So they switched their May Day celebrations to Saturday. So she's got her game and then she's skedaddling. So, and Shamrock's, you know, that's a long day and a long drive for him. So we talked with her and she's like, yeah, don't bother coming. Just watch it because their games are streamed. So we're just going to settle down tomorrow morning and watch uh, Megan play her last game of the, se of the season. They had a rough loss this week. She was a little upset. So I think she's ready for the season to <laughs> to wrap up at this point. Um, and what else? That's really about it. I don't have much more, um, much more to talk about. So uh, hopefully we'll get all some stitching in. Hopefully you may or may not have May plans, whatever you're stitching for May. I hope you enjoy it and have fun with it. Like I said, I will try to do some sort of video myself potentially. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it for stitching. If you've got anything new and exciting you were stitching on or some new and exciting stitching news, feel free to, um, share. I love to hear, uh, what you're stitching and all that good stuff. But for now, I hope your weather is, <laughs> it's sunny today, but it has been cold. I hope it's not quite as cold wherever you are. We, I, uh, the upper count, the top of the state had frost warnings overnight uh, last night. That's how cold it's been. <laughs> I'm bringing out the winter gods again. So I'm hoping it's a, it gets a little bit nicer and we actually have some spring at some point. That's my, that's my goal, my wish. But I hope it's a little bit nicer wherever you are. Um, and you are getting a chance to spend some time outside without freezing. I'm waiting for the weather to get nicer before I take Connor, uh, Connor, <laughs> Shamrock in the stroller <coughs> because he, you know, he's got, he's got very little on him, um, uh, extra weight wise. So I, I don't want, I feel like he feels the cold a little bit more. So we try to be very careful. He had his coat on yesterday when we take him out, but, um, yeah, I hope, I hope you're getting lots of stitching in. I hope today you got lots of stitching in. As usual, it seems like my my new normal is an hour long video. So if you are still here, thank you so much for listening to me for all this time and sharing your stitching and my stitching and sharing our love of the hobby together. And um, until next time, happy stitching. <laughs>